Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Mark Schultz with North Star Commodity. And we're seeing lower prices in all but parts of the cattle complex today. And Mark, let's start off in the grains because we're seeing pressure after we scored some reversals yesterday in the entire grain complex. So why the lack of follow through buying interest? Well, I think for the most part, we saw a pretty good turnaround for U.S products of corn, soybeans, and mainly wheat. But when you look at the international prices, we didn't see much of a reversal at all. We didn't really see any big follow through to the upside uh, overnight uh, in the international markets. So I think here for today, you, you know, we, we got, the, we started out lower, we at least are coming back towards the upper end of the range and both the wheat and the corn, uh, we're going to have to finish. I think the biggest thing right now, technically, uh, at least was a little bit encouraging for the definitely for the wheat market, but keep in mind we dropped the dollar fifty a bushel in twelve trading days, so uh, getting a bounce back was probably get some type of a, a scenario is going to unfold like that. But I think right now, if you can come back and close above yesterday's highs on both corn and wheat, uh, might give you a little bit more of a hope of some type of bounce to the upside. Also, I would say we didn't have anything uh, impressive about export sales wheat was okay corn was showed it's negative beans uh just so so but uh when you look around at the weather really not a major uh weather problem to at least brewing right now granted we're dry in the midwest there's rain in the forecast and warmer weather and that's basically ideal for what what we're seeing right now we're making a lot of planting progress uh in both corn and soybeans this week Yeah, so we really don't have a bullish story to continue to see any buying interest in these markets. And then you add the risk off from the outside markets on top of that, right? Yeah, you're right. Uh, The outside markets is a concern. Uh, The Dow is down about 400 points uh, uh, here today. We've uh, dropped about, uh, what, 800 points uh, the previous two days. And if you look at a weekly chart on the Dow futures you're going to have right now showing an outside down day, that's a little bit concerning because we ran right up into close to some significant resistance and and it it stopped it. So that is always a concern. Now, obviously, you always want an outside markets to show uh, support. And that usually gives you better opportunity in the commodity markets. In this case, it'd be a little bit of a uh, of a red flag popping up on the outside market activity. Weather-wise, like I say, not much of a problem. You've got some minor issues over in Europe, Spain specifically, Western uh, Canada uh, on the dry side. Uh, maybe some up in central and northern Brazil where it has t- started to turn dry. Uh, our source is still telling us that maybe the crop was far enough along that the damage and yield uh, declines likely to be minimal uh, because the crop was far enough along. So from a technical standpoint here, um, like I said, we did score those reversals yesterday. You know, do you think that these lows are going to hold, though? You said we kind of need those to hold from yesterday. Yeah, we sure do. I think uh, you go back on July corn, watch that 572. We dipped below it yesterday uh, and then came back out with a vengeance to the upside. We start closing below 572 on July corn. We're in serious trouble uh, on the corn market. Wheat market would be the same thing. If you start taking out the lows that were posted uh, here uh, two days ago, uh, that also would not bode well for right now. I still think the markets overall, and I've been pretty clear about this to everybody, that uh, we're not going up because of some newfound demand. We're going up only because of some weather issue or something else that catastrophic goes wrong over in uh, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, that would be about the only thing that I would see or uh, that's going to be needed in order to take the markets uh, to the upside. We are not going to go up because of newfound demand. I don't see that at all. No, I'm with you on that. So is this a buying opportunity if you're a livestock producer and you need corn? Um, You know, I'm not jumping on it yet. Um, I certainly could build a case for it, but uh, I'd probably take my uh, wait and see if we do close above uh, yesterday's highs, then maybe I'll start toying with that. Probably an options only uh, is how I play it. for right now, just simply because I don't have a lot of faith. I, to me, the markets still appear to me to be nothing more than rallies or to be more uh, selling opportunities than they are on buying opportunities on the dip. I buy the dip only because we've had a pretty significant sell-off. That's it. Right. And so let's talk about the cattle market as well. It's, you know, you talk about the risk off and that market is certainly sensitive to that. And we did see lower cash this week. 
Plus, yesterday we took out some key support areas. So, you know, what's your assessment of the market right now? Do you think we're still holding together pretty well? Was this a healthy correction? Well, a, a correction probably needed. Uh, I think the cash simply went way too high, way too fast and got ahead of itself. Yeah. And that probably has put a high in the market on the cash end of it. On the futures end, you're trading at a rather uh, significant discount. A couple of things I don't like about it. One is price of beef is going to get high. You're probably going to start seeing some type of a cut in domestic demand. Our export sales respectable last week, um, but we're still running below a year ago. Uh, and I don't see anything changing that in the near future. And again, I'm a little bit nervous about the uh, equity markets, the stock market in general, that if we go into a little bit more of a sell-off in here, you're running into also into your uh, time period here. By the end of May, you probably have hit your peak as far as beef demand for the year, uh, as far as the uh, significant buying. And uh, that usually comes to an end at about the end of May. So once Memorial is over, uh, weekend is over with, pretty good bet. You're going to see uh, prices at the grocery store and beef going up, not down. All right. But longer term this year, don't you think after we get past this seasonal dip that we normally have that we look good maybe forward, especially well, as you get into the tighter numbers? Well, I think we get into the tighter numbers and yes, we're going to have to cut, curb demand uh, one way or the other because the numbers would show that beef is going to continue to get relatively tight. Um, again, funds have got a lot of length in this too. That's a little bit concerning. Once we can get that cleaned up, yeah, maybe we start seeing things get better, but probably not until later on in the fall time period. Gotcha. All right. So let's also talk about the hog market here because uh, hogs just can't seem to sustain a rally. We had a higher weekly close last week and then kind of followed that up with a reversal. And you can't even rally this thing with this big export figure that you had this morning. So is it just too many numbers? Is it the futures premium to the cash yet or what is it? Futures premium to the cash is your biggest issue. And I'll say this, you're absolutely right. You're, it's, it's basically a one step forward, one step back. There's no sustained move to the upside. I mean, let's be clear, the pork, a lot of the primal cuts are extremely low. I mean, you're, you're trading rib prices right now at about $115 a hundred weight. You should be about on average, the five-year average for this time is about $155 to $160. So we're extremely low. Bellies are at $80. They should be historically about $135 to $140 at this time period. So pork is cheap. We're just, and we've got good exports, not only this week, uh, record uh, marketing year, uh, weekly sales last week. Uh, and we still can't build on it, but it's the futures that hold the big 13 to $15 premium to the cash market. And you got to bet the betting uh, is that the cash has to come up to 88 to $90 on, on these summer uh, hogs. Uh, that's where they're going to go up. The index is going to go up wherever the futures are. And uh, that's, that's what's got to happen. And right now it's a, it's a tough road to, to climb here. Uh, I like some of the fundamentals, but um Right now, we just got to get more on the domestic demand the way it looks to me. The oversupply situation, though, is that why we've seen Smithville announce that they're going to do some sow liquidation? And were you surprised to see that? Um, I think that, you know, the, from what I can gather on the story and what I would see more to fit, one, it hasn't really been all that profitable in the hog business. Two, uh, some of these sow units have just run into a cluster of health issues year in and year out, and you can't seem to get a, a, it under control. And it basically is getting to the point of where people are just looking at shutting down those sow units and uh, and walk away from it because it's just a problem. And I'll say this, there's no money in it. If you've got a healthy pig, let alone if you've got any health issue, you don't make any money out of this. And that's becoming more of the issue uh, on this market than anything else. The, the pork, for whatever it is, it simply gets a, a sick a little bit easier than, than you do with the poultry and or with the beef. All right. Thanks for joining us. As always, Mark Schultz with North Star Commodity, and that is Markets Now.